Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Anna and we talk about books here. How are you doing today? I hope that you are doing wonderful. I hope that fall has fallen wherever you are. Today I have a fun video for you. Something that I have kind of touched upon about a year ago. I did a video similar to this, but now I feel like I'm in a slightly different headspace to tell you maybe more concretely the ideas and the patterns that I implement to help me to create a reading habit. So I have put together 10 little, little tidbits some that you've heard before maybe, some that might be new, some that just might be mind-blowing and may push you over the edge to make reading a part of your life. The first hack, the first little life hack that I have, number one, is pick books that are relative to you. There is nothing more discouraging than picking up a book that you have been told by a million and a half people is life-changing, amazing, it's a classic, it's gonna blow your mind, and you hate it. Or you can't even get into it. You are the judge of what you are consuming. Don't feel like you have to read something because everybody else has read it. Truly, I have picked up books that everyone says is a classic, that's so good, this is an amazing author, and I really haven't been able to get into it. And you know what I do? I just pick up a book that I know I'm gonna love. Find what you're passionate about and let it dictate what you pick up. If you're trying to get into reading, pick something that you know you're going to love or you know, read the first page or so and if it immediately clicks, go with it. It's a very personal experience. If you're embarrassed by it, hide it underneath your bed and read it when you're alone. Who cares? Just get that thing moving. Nobody's gonna judge you. I won't, at least. You can share it with me. I won't judge you. Unless it's really rough, then, you know. It's a personal journey. It's a personal journey. Anyway, on to number two. Set a goal for yourself. Now, this doesn't have to be a huge goal. You don't have to set 100 books for yourself right out of the gate. Set a goal of pages. Set a goal of hours. If you want to read one page a day, start with that goal. And then you can kind of boost that goal gauge. You want to do five pages a day, do five pages a day. You want to do ten pages a day, you do ten pages a day. Use these as stepping stones to really maximize the experience and to get yourself to that higher goal. I've continually put goals for myself as I've gotten much more confident in my reading experience. Last year I started at 50. I did it humble brag. This year I'm at 75. I'm not on track, but I'm getting there slowly. Building that confidence within myself has pushed me to pursue higher and loftier goals with reading. It's just starting it and starting with these really, really attainable goals. So that is what I look for to kind of help myself to keep it going. So number three, and this kind of ties into setting a goal for yourself, but this is hold yourself accountable. Again, this extends far past reading books, but for me personally, I started this YouTube channel to hold myself accountable, to have this very, very public delving into books and really making myself have to commit to what I have said because it's a public platform and I know that I will be horrifically chastised if I don't. I'm kidding. Now, I'm not telling you don't start a YouTube channel if you do not feel comfortable, if you do not feel like making a fool of yourself on the internet, you don't have to do that. But there are other resources. You have Goodreads, you have Storygraph. You can also just keep a journal for yourself. It doesn't even have to be public. It can just be this concrete display. Every year I write down my goals for myself and lo and behold, just having that physical permanence helps me to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Use Goodreads to your advantage. Categorize those books that you want to read. Add books that you plan to read in the future. Just use these platforms that you have and hold yourself accountable. Number four. Audiobooks are your friend. As recently as two years ago, I wasn't actively using audiobooks. I grew up using audiobooks as a kid, but I didn't really use it like I should. And then a year ago, I found myself in a foreign country where I wasn't really having access to a lot of English language books, which is unfortunately the only language that I'm able to read in. So I found myself reaching into the void and lo and behold, I was like, oh my God, audiobooks are a thing. And now, 
I use audiobooks all the time. What I think is really nice about audiobooks is it's kind of like this massage for your brain, this conditioning to get you into the format of storytelling, to get you into being engrossed for an hour or two, and just exercise this continuum. And you can, you can do so many other things while you're doing it. You can clean, if you don't have that much time, audiobooks are an amazing, amazing, amazing resource for getting that information that you want and setting it towards your goal, making it a habit. Every day you can listen to an audiobook, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you can get there. And it really helps to acclimate you into this whole reading experience. Highly, highly suggest you can find a paid format or you can just go through Libby, which is a great library associated audiobook service. Number five, to really hone in on exactly what this video is about, it's just understanding that this is a habit, that with any sort of habit that we have, it's incessant and it has to be worked out. You can't run a marathon without training for it. I mean, girl, you could, but you'll be sore, okay? You'll never run that marathon again. <laughs> I do actually have a friend who ran it without training and he said it was horrible. You have to commit to understanding that this is a habit. Reading isn't easy. If I step away from reading for a month, I have to get back into the habit of it. It takes me a while. I don't want to gravitate towards reading a book if I haven't done it in a long time. Don't be discouraged if you step away from it and you lose that momentum that you had originally really gone hard at. If it doesn't come at first, just really, really push yourself to get to that next point. That helps me. If I set something down and I don't pick it up, I know that She's gonna be sweating for a week or two, trying to get back into it, so there you go. To also kind of tie into that about abandoning things, I mentioned this in the last video that I did, DNF if you need to. Don't feel like you have to continue when you don't want to, you know? It's like a bad relationship, romantic, platonic. If you feel like it's gone on too long, it's gone on too long. And you always were like, God, I should have ended that sooner. Same thing with a book. You don't have to continue if you hate everything about it. You can hate it and you don't ever have to revisit it again. Do not finish if it ain't clicking, baby. Nobody's looking over your shoulder and thinking you're a bad person for not finishing that book. Number seven, this might seem like a very silly one, but something that I think helps a lot more than you can imagine. Always have a book or a resource of a book close by. I find that the moment to read strikes when I never have a book around me. And I always think to myself, God, I would die to have my book right now. Why didn't I bring my book? I'm such a dumbass. Always have that book nearby. Now, of course, like if you're carrying 50 different things on your commute or your day-to-day -day life, a book can be pretty thick, especially if it's one of those over-ambitious writers that you're carrying around. So, I don't know, maybe find your small books that you want to bring with you. Something that you can just kind of slip in a bag, even if you can put it in a pocket, that's much better. Always have it close by, always have it near you when you want to go to bed. Something that just makes it a very easy pickup. Like I said, I always regret when I don't have those books around me, but it really is sometimes the difference between picking up a book and not picking it up. Just having that proximity to it does help me out quite a bit. Just have it nearby. It ain't hurting nobody. It ain't hurting nobody, baby. And you can use it as a coaster if you have a sweaty drink. Number eight. Now this, okay, this is kind of a stretch, but hear me out here. Sometimes you just have to commit to one full day of reading to just jumpstart that habit, to just jumpstart that heart, jumpstart that car. For me, usually around fall time, I've come off of this rambunctious summertime. She's been a crazy girl. She's let that hair down and she's kind of lost track of how many books she still needs to read and the books that she promised herself she would get to. So you know what I do? I find one day and I just 
sit down and I execute those books. I take them and I conquer. That really helps. I just had it recently. I just had a full day of just sitting and reading and I finished a book and I loved it. It helped me get back into reading and it made me crave the books that I have on my shelves. I looked at them with this newfound adoration and knowing that I can read them and knowing that I can finish a book in a day. Again, not everybody has a lifestyle that they can do that. A lot of people have very, very busy schedules, so I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but just really doing one day of just reading a book, just sitting and reading a book from beginning to end and just doing it in a day. That helps me so much. I do it once a year and it makes me feel great. It makes me feel whole. And it makes the, you know, the coffee that I drink throughout the day feel like it's justifiable and worth it. And number nine. Number nine seems like it's very simple, but I don't know. It's just, it's just something that helps me. And that is surround yourself with readers. Obviously, if you clicked onto this, you actively are looking for some sort of book reading community. Booktube, book talk, libraries, book clubs, whatever your attachment to reading groups may be, use those as a stepping stone to get into it. For me, it's actually, if I'm just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a friend about books, there's something about that just really excites me. I was talking to one of my friends and I was going through his Goodreads and we were just chatting about the books that he read and there was just such a liveliness in this interaction that it was just like, oh my God, I, you know what, I wanna read that, I wanna read that. that, that makes me feel so close to you. It makes me so excited about going into a bookstore and knowing exactly what I wanna read. You go to the gym because you wanna be around people that work out. You work in certain fields because you enjoy being around those people. Creatives work together because it's an augmentation to the entirety of the performance. Why would you not do the same thing with reading? Go to a library if you don't feel like it's easy for you to interact with people. Use booktube, uh, use book talk. These are all things that are made to really embellish this experience of reading and really having a community is wonderful. I, I love it, obviously. That's what I'm doing right now, but it really makes a difference for me to just have these conversations with people. It means a lot, and that's kind of the reason that we read, to just philosophize about these experiences that we're having. So, God, I think that flowed really well. <laughs> and the tenth tip is something that I feel like goes without saying, but I do have to just say this, realizing reading's importance to you. This kind of just takes everything that I talked about and put it into one. Realize what you want to get out of reading. Do you want to actively understand what's going on in that book? Do you want to learn about something new? Why do you feel like you have to read? For me, it's education. I am constantly trying to learn about something new and through the bridge of reading, I'm able to just get a little capsule of something that I might not be familiar with and I'm able to understand a group of people or a situation much more and for me that is just the highest encouragement to just continually keep going in this process and just reinvent myself as a reader throughout the entire thing. Once you find the importance of reading to you, it's the ultimate motivator. That I think is probably the biggest tip that I can impart on you is just really, really look for your particular process and what is the starting point of that. So, I'm gonna get off my high horse now. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the bottom of this chair, but I've been sitting with no socks on for the entirety of this time, so I wanted to have a very, um, peaceful approach to all of this, let you know that I'm really stripped down. This is the acoustic version of, uh, <laughs> of tips to read. <laughs> oh Lord. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is something a little bit more, I don't know, just kind of casual. And I wanted to revisit a video that I had previously made now that I feel a little bit more confident talking in front of the camera. And uh, I hope that this helped you. Let me know what tips that you can share with others. Everybody has their own way of doing this. So let me know some things that you do use. Let me know if there's other platforms to hold yourself accountable.
drop it in the comments. Let's get that convo going. You guys are wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you soon.